What's happening, folks? What's up? Today we're gonna be reviewing Goliath at Wallaby Holland, which is one of my favorite classic, standard, completely plain coasters I've ridden. Okay, that sounds like a critique when I say plain. No, no, no. Uh -huh. Goliath is an awesome mega coaster located at Wallaby Holland, which is one of those coasters that very well proves that you don't need much more than a great layout and some classic feel for a ride to be great. Now it is their second tier airtime machine after they got untamed, but that doesn't demean it in any way. Goliath is often compared to the Ride of Steel clones, whereas Goliath is then called the optimal version, basically what they should have been. More powerful, more beautiful. Which I can definitely see, although I haven't even been to the US. America! Anyway, I rode Goliath in July of 2022, and in this review, I will kick off with the technical stuff. And I'm gonna be high. So Goliath is a mega coaster made by Intamin Amusement Rides. It is the second one they made in Europe after Expedition G-Force at Holiday Park and it opened in 2002, making it almost as old as I am. It has 32 rider trains over 16 rows, which is a pretty amazing capacity, rivaling the capacity of such rides as B&M Hyper Coasters. And it also has those classic Intamin mega coaster trains that are incredibly comfortable with the OG T-Bars. And I just can't help but love these restraints. I I've heard some people have pain problems with them, but I don't think that's an issue at all. You're the weak. These restraints make you feel incredibly free and makes any airtime and whip feel even better. These trains are also incredibly similar to the ones found on mega light coasters such as Piraten at Jursommerland, except it seems the larger models do have better room for your feet in the trains, making them even more comfortable. Goliath is 153.7 feet tall, which is the tallest coaster in the Netherlands, although it's only the second tallest in the Benelux after Conda opened in 2021. I am king. It's 3,982.9 feet long, making it the longest coaster in the Benelux, however. And it also goes 65.9 miles an hour, which also makes it the fastest in the Netherlands, but only the third in all of the Benelux after both Conda and Fury. From the lift hill to the final brake run, it has a duration of 55 seconds, which is really good. It definitely feels like a long ride, especially due to the middle section and a great first half as well. And it just doesn't feel short in any way. And of course, it has zero inversions. It's not really typical to find inversions on mega coasters, although Intamin do sometimes disregard that. Because he broke the rules. What rules? I am the king! Goliath has the presentation of a king. <clears throat> What up? It has this own little plaza where the angle you look at it from makes it look royal and powerful, and it just sort of has a special presence. You go down and look straight up the lift hill, and then it just disappears after the drop, and there's something so magical about that. It's overall a great ride to look at regarding that and the elements that also blend in with the landscape if you look at it from the parking lot. And aside from just having the presentation of a king, the colors are also royal and gorgeous. I'm not sure if I'm too hung up on this thing basically being a a monarch but who cares I mean the dark blue with the black is just beautiful it's a great combination along with the black trains and it's pure eye candy it's one of the most gorgeous coasters I've seen especially considering that the old color scheme is a fucking joke I'm gonna throw up. and no that is not because they were literally the colors of the Joker <laughs> But now it is the best looking coaster at the park while still having a great awe factor at the same time. Felix, Felix, Felix! Goliath has a very simple layout. You start out with a cable lift that it runs up into. It is very fast, very smooth. You don't even feel like you get hooked onto the cable itself, which is pretty cool. Then you have the first drop, and people tend to say this is a very good drop. Now, I will say I rode this coaster in the very front row and in the middle towards the back, so I was close to the back row. Anyway, the drop was very good back there. I got a decent pop of weaker ejector back there, meaning that the very back row probably gives a great pop of ejector airtime, and then the front row you get some weaker floater. Unfortunately, the drop is not very sustained no matter where you sit. She died. It will always be a quick pop because it flattens out halfway down. It is very gradual over the middle, which means that the airtime isn't as sustained. At the bottom of the drop in the valley though, you get a very good dose of positive forces. You get an amazing sense of speed here. <laughs> 
and get pushed very hard into your seat. And then the first Camelback is just an awesome sustained ejector moment. Close to the back, I thought it was very gradual and the airtime got stronger throughout the Camelback, giving some great weaker ejector for me. But in the very front row, I got a very strong dose of ejector airtime that was sustained throughout the entire hill. The front row is definitely the place to sit on this hill for me. And it is definitely the best element on the ride, for sure. After that, you go into this turn where you also get a little bit of positive forces. That is a really nice difference from the airtime before you head up into the world's first Stangle Dive. And it's a pretty fun element. You can definitely feel that it isn't as aggressive as some more modern Stangle Dives, but this is a super fun element. Right as you go into it, you get a little bit of whip toward your left side before you then get a little bit of laterals toward your right side as you're leveling out again. And here I'm speaking from the front row where I definitely thought that was best as well. It's not a super aggressive moment, but the laterals are really fun and twisty. Then you go into the middle part that starts out with the first helix. And one of the complaints I often hear about Goliath is the fact that the helixes aren't really that good and kind of boring. Well, I'm here to tell you that that is bullshit in my eyes. What? I think that what is most underrated about Goliath, or at least overlooked, is its positive forces in those helixes specifically. Because while it isn't the strongest dose you can get, I would say that both helixes have very good strengths of positive forces, and they're incredibly sustained while also being low to the ground and having one of the best senses of speed in the park. This is a great helix that really pushes you well into your seat for a long time. I loved the helixes. You also have the two twisted bunny hills that are after each helix and they also both feel just the same. These elements are also definitely best up front. As closer to the back and especially near the middle, you don't really feel that much. You get some weak floater and some very weak whip, but they're really nothing special. However, if you sit in the front row, you get a great stronger floater airtime pop while also getting a fun little whip. Again, it's not a super aggressive moment no matter where you sit, but in the front row, the twisted hills are definitely fun and grant some really good forces, although mild, they're incredibly fun up there. This elongated turn here doesn't really do anything special, but they lead you into the triple bunny hill finale. People always talk about the first of these three bunny hills being the strongest. I actually didn't quite think so, but again, I'm speaking from the front row essentially. In the middle towards the back, I got some weak ejector over these hills, but up in the front row, I got very strong ejector airtime over these hills. The first hill has incredibly great strong ejector airtime, and I actually thought the second hill had even stronger airtime. And then the final hill also has great strong ejector airtime that is just below the strength of the first two. So you can feel a bit of a difference on all three hills, but nonetheless all of them are great ejector moments, especially towards the front row. Fire! Then you have this small underbank turn that gives some nice smooth laterals toward your right, very similar to those in the Stengel Dive. And then this final turnaround here also gives a great dose of positive forces that are pretty intense before you hit the final break run. And that is the simple but awesome layout of Goliath. It definitely seems like I like this layout more than a lot of people do, so let's talk about that in the pacing category. So Goliath speed is kept up all the way through. It never slows down, it always has a fantastic sense of speed. It is a fast boy, especially in the front row. I mean, I had tears crawling down my face in the front row and the wind was amazing. It is one of the best coasters for the sense of speed I've ridden, especially because of those helixes. It definitely feels as fast as it's claimed to be. Now, people's issue is with the middle part. People say that it starts out very strong and then it's a big dud throughout the entire middle part with the helixes and the twist, and then it's strong again in the end. I definitely see where people are coming from with this, but I mean, these aren't issues for me, to be honest. The Helix just did not feel like a break in pacing for me in the slightest, and they felt very fast and powerful. And such forces are important to incorporate in these models, which Goliath executes very well. I do agree, though, that the Twisted Hills are kind of a break in pacing. Interesting. They're definitely not as strong as pretty much anything else on the ride. And I do wish that they gave ejector airtime or at least just a stronger whip. I still think they're great fun moments and I really like them up front, but I do agree that they do break the pacing regarding elements and forces. And I definitely see what people's problem with the ride's pacing is, at least with the Twisted Hills, but I don't mind it one bit on the front row, especially not the Helixes. I think they fit in perfectly with the pacing. They have a great sense of speed, they're intense, and they're super fun. And otherwise, the ride's pacing is a home run. Home run!
Am I a normal person, Miss Bryant? Goliath is a super smooth coaster. Intamin seems to have nailed these type of coasters back in the day, as opposed to what some people say about the new ones. <laughs> You will find small amounts of shuffling on Goliath, but it's hardly noticeable. I didn't really pay it any thought during my rides, because for a coaster this age, to have just the smallest amount of shaking is as normal as apple pie. <laughs> Any coaster this age will most likely be more shaky than Goliath is, so it is a butter smooth coaster. I don't have a single complaint. I had to think hard about how it actually felt regarding smoothness, because it was just that smooth that you didn't really think about it. No complaints in this department. Yes, you're a big boy, aren't you, sir? Now, Goliath's theme is literally just the fact that it's a big boy. The name of Goliath is a biblical character who was a giant. <laughs> which goes very well along with the presentation that Goliath has that it is a giant, but at the same time, Six Flags were the ones who named the Goliath, and they'll name fucking anything Goliath. <laughs> Now, outside of being a big boy, Goliath doesn't really have any theme. The theming is nice though. The station looks really nice on the outside, even though there's nothing on the inside. And there are small pieces of theming throughout this little plaza. Everything looks really nice with the colors and the designs. There's also this Star Wars sign of Goliath on the ground, which I thought was really cool. And of course, there's the actual Goliath sign in the middle, which looks really good. This is a great looking sign, and it's great in the middle of the plaza as well. Very, very nice. Very nice. So generally, regarding the theming, it is definitely a true amusement park ride. It's not really a theme park ride, but I honestly didn't think it was missing any theming. It's the kind of ride that is just fine as it is and doesn't need any. It is no bad thing to celebrate a simple life. Overall, Goliath is just a really great coaster. My first ride, which was close to the back near the middle as well, definitely left me a little bit disappointed, but the second ride exceeded my expectations. I started thinking this was a really good coaster, and then I thought it was an incredible experience afterwards. And the great thing about Goliath is it doesn't try to be anything it's not. It's just a big coaster with strong airtime, high levels of force, perfect sense of speed, and it has great execution of being such a classic. I love Love Goliath for being exactly what it is. I love you, bitch. Oh my God. I ain't gonna never stop loving you, bitch. It's a simple coaster that packs a big punch, and I want to give it an entire 9.5 out of 10 for its score. Obviously, it isn't anything mind blowing or has theming or modern ingenuity enough to boost it to a perfect 10 out of 10 or a 10 plus, but as I said, it isn't missing anything. Goliath is just awesome, and it need not be more. And while I definitely do see the problem that some people have this coaster, it, it definitely doesn't bother me. I don't care about the pacing problems, I don't care about the middle part, because I liked the middle part. It is a fantastic coaster that I hope Wallaby Holland holds onto for a long time, it is important in the park, it feels very different to Untamed, even though they're both airtime machines, and yet they have very different values. Goliath shines in positive forces and speed and location as well, whereas Untamed excels in literally just trying to kill you. Thank you Six Flags for calling up Intamin to make this coaster. And thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think about Goliath in the comments below. Whether you've written it or not, I would love to hear what you think about this ride. And otherwise, I hope to see you soon. Because, I don't know, I'm... Listen. <coughs> <coughs> fuck. I ran out of ideas for the outro. Bye.